What up YouTube? Today I'm going to put before you a slight review and comparison between two pocket multi-tools that I think are extraordinarily valuable but for different reasons but both kind of fit into the realm of a woods and survival tool. The first is here, the Victorinox Ranger Grip 58 by Victorinox and, oh, close you sucker, the Leatherman Signal multi-tool and survival tool designed to be your wilderness pocket friend. To get a little bit of a grasp and rundown about how these things will fill and fit into your life, let's first check out the wood or head out to the woods and check out a bit of their performance. Here we are checking out the saws, a region in which Victorinox continuously leaves Leatherman in the dust. I mean, it's nice to have a saw on a Leatherman, but sometimes it feels like getting excited for a chocolate cake only to find out that it's dark, dark chocolate and bitter to the core. 45 second trim time. Now we move just a little bit up the branch here with the Victorinox and part of this is it's a longer saw, but I think it's a bi-directional versus Leatherman and less than half the time. Smash, thank you, ma'am. Now here I am pretending to be a wood chipper with the Victorinox blade, making pretty smooth, easy, short work of the wood here. And we get into a little bit of this curly making and uh, this knife for you know, just this general shape is, well, I mean, it's utilitarian across the board. And it just makes wood feel a little bit like butter, as though I'm melting excellent peanut butter cookies with butter. That doesn't make sense, but I think I'm hungry. So enjoy that deliciousness while it lasts. And then we have the Leatherman, while also capable of wood chipping with that dual edge on there, is a little more challenging for just ripping through the wood. Again, not that serrations don't have a place, but when it comes to like woodcraft and wilderness craft, it's not necessarily your best friend. And that's where the actual shavings and carving and other elements you see when I hit the serrations there uh, gets a little more challenging. It's almost like having a conjoined twin and trying to do gymnastics, which made sense at the time of thinking, even though they're hardly related, truth be told. But it does a decent enough job and it nicely fits in the pocket and clips. You can see it hanging out there, super accessible and easy to get to, though either my hands are unreasonably large or my pockets are unreasonably small, it is a little bit prohibitive for casual strolling and hanging out. Whereas the Victorinox falls to the bottom of the chasm that is this pocket, a narrow one, mind you, but chasm just the same. So in my hand goes, no funny business here. And with that lanyard dropped in, it's actually not that hard to grab and get use of. Now let's look at some of these features here. We've got the main primary blade of both of these. As I mentioned before, um, we got the partial serrations on the Leatherman, straight edge on the Victorinox. The Victorinox blade is longer, just like the saw, which helps it be, is one of the helpful elements of its effective use is that it's longer, but also I, I believe that that Leatherman is a single direction while the Victorinox is bi-directional, which helps it cut both ways. We got, a little screwdriver here for a little twisty twist, a little awl or a reamer, excellent for woodcraft or scraping. And the Leatherman has those things too. And advantage goes to the Leatherman in this regard because you have the bit driver there. You could extend it. It's got a can opener. Well, so does the Victorinox. But the placement of these things make them a little more intuitive and useful in a, a wider variety of places. Got the can opener there with another little screwdriver. Take that Leatherman. Here's the bottle opener. Though the Leatherman has one of those too. Part of that hammer thing. It's all hammery and smashy. There I am getting that flathead business along with the Phillips head business. 
again, both of both of these tools have both of these features. They're just kind of arranged in a layout that gives you a, a different feel and slightly different utility. And obviously there are no pliers on the Victorinox, nor is there a bit converter like you see there, which is an actually pretty handy feature and a hammer. And that hammer is actually pretty functional. I've used it a few times. I don't display it here, but it, it, uh, it actually is useful. And what you don't get with the Leatherman is a delightful fingernail cleaner and thorn remover. I mean, toothpick and tweezers. Um, that's pretty much where those tools lie. Also, there's the added element that is not part of the Victorinox, which is a self-contained sharpening unit in the Leatherman, as well as an emergency whistle and emergency ferrocerium rod. Those are handy for the survival scenario. You don't see me using it here just because it's so small and I want to preserve it for said emergencies. Uh, those are actually super nice to have, though not absolutely necessary. And I'll get into the explaining in a little bit here. Now, when we get into exactly which one is likely for you, the features and abilities of these particular tools to me are very useful in two different realms. If you're wondering to yourself which one is going to be a better woods or possibly survival companion, I would have to say it'd be the Ranger Grip. Because of its longer blade, its straight edge, its more effective saw and comfort in the hand, it's far more comfortable in the hand than, than the signal is. This is the type of tool that you would want to use to process a great deal of wood or meat or anything else and still stand, you know, trust that it's going to be there. And if you really need any other you know, evidence or convincing at truly how versatile this tool is, I would have you check out Felix Immler's YouTube channel and even his book called The Swiss Army Knife Book, where this knife and this knife alone are what he used to, uses to construct a remarkable range and array of tools and structures in the wilderness. It's astonishing how with a little creativity, this one knife can fill the role of a wide variety of tools that you may carry in your kit. The only thing that this particular knife would not share in terms of like a survival kind of scenario that it, it, the signal has is a ferro rod, a sharpener, and an emergency whistle. There are um, aftermarket custom inserts for like the toothpick area that you can get that are a ferro rod, but it still doesn't have a sharpener and a whistle, which are extraordinarily useful if survival, right? The don't die for the next couple of days mindset is the one that you're subscribing to. Now, where does the signal fit in this? Because I, I would have to say that this would be, this is the single most useful multi-tool that Leatherman produces. Now, if you've watched any of my much older videos, I made that claim about the, uh, the Skeletool. And the reason I made that claim about the Skeletool is not because it has the 17 to 21 available tools that are in, say, the Wave or the Surge. Those do make them extraordinarily useful, but it's because of its ease of carry. When you consider its general profile and its general weight, it is heavier, definitely, than your average pocket knife by a decent margin, but this pocket clip makes it pocketable and thus easier to carry and more accessible to you. And because it has a broader range of tools than the Skeletool does, it is thus increased in usefulness. And I find it particularly exciting to have this larger size of pliers in my pocket than the Skeletool is able to offer. And yes, you can get you know, attachable pocket clips for say the wave or the surge. But again, those are so massive and heavy comparatively that you just want it on your belt. This is one that I carry in my pocket consistently and is so useful in so many ways. I've used the hammer end to pound in nails on the fence that were starting to weasel their way out. Cause I know if I just pound them in real quick, I can get a little more time out of them before I have to go through and replace things. 
The serrated blade, I'm not a fan of serrations necessarily, but it wasn't a deal breaker for me. And when we're talking about something that's just generally utilitarian, this blade shape and size and the, the partially serrated edge turned out to be a bit of a godsend in its overall use. The fact that it has the replaceable driver here means that if you wanted, you could get that bit kit that Leatherman sells and increase the capacity of utility here that could fit in your pocket or, I mean, it still comes with a sheath you could slip things into. And it's got the can opener and reamer and saw as part of it. Now, that, and that's why to me, this thing is kind of a perfect everyday carry type of multi-tool and even its ability to fit in extra bit drivers that you may come across or need through this little deal here extends its versatility and usefulness to many other areas of your life than just the woods. And again, if we're talking about a woods tool, this is, this is your buddy, this is your money maker. If you're talking about an overall tool that you would carry and use for all sorts of things, this, this guy right here takes the cake, in my opinion, of all Leatherman multi-tools that I've encountered since. I wish they would do something about their saw because it does the job, but it holds, doesn't even hold a candle to the light of uh, Victorinox's saw. And when we're talking about something that you just generally carry for general use, which to me is where this sits as a, as a wilderness tool, this doesn't fit the bill for me like other things do. But since it does those, it, it, it is such a utilitarian piece of equipment overall, I would almost like to see this keep keep the sharpener bit, but maybe fit it on the back side or in an internal way, some way that makes it a little less in the way of your hand, and to dispense of the ferro rod attachment altogether. Um, you can see it's a little bit scraped and used. I didn't do it to the video because it, in the video because it's so small, right? And I just don't want to use it up in case it does require that emergency survival scenario. Um, but I would see it, see a slightly more discreet placement of the cutting tool, or at least one that doesn't put it on your fingers necessarily when you're using the knife blade and the abandonment of the whistle and ferro rod altogether. But again, their existence there in those places is not a deal breaker. There's still assets and values to this tool. They're just not necessarily needed for what I perceive to be the most useful place of this tool in your life and in your EDC rotation or toolkit or whatever else. Um, so did Leatherman miss the mark on their intended and advertised use of this tool? 100% I think they did. I think this knife is not necessarily, this multi-tool is not necessarily going to edge anything out for wilderness and survival situations. However, did they nail it when it comes to an extraordinarily useful, carryable, and versatile tool? Absolutely. I would pick this over a wave or a skeletal or a surge in a heartbeat because it is pocketable, easy to carry, and more verse and and that's what makes it more useful and versatile because it's always there it'll just always be easy to access unlike things that require a pouch it's just easier to justify carrying this on your person versus other things which is where it may come in handy for say more urban oriented survival scenarios and it would be nice to leatherman if you ever bother to listen to this over there you guys um to be able to have kind of like what SOG does where you can swap out tools, if I were able to unbolt the saw and put a file down, because this is again, to me, not a wilderness carry, but a general urban utility tool to have either a file or maybe a system like the Surge where you can swap it out, that would just add to this and its utility and its, and its glory. Um, so there you go, there's that comparison. I hope it was particularly useful and informational and valuable to you. Both of these are astonishing, well thought out and very useful tools. I just think they would fit different places in your life in terms of 
what you want to do with it, if that makes sense. So thanks for watching. Thanks for checking it out. If you enjoyed it, check out our Patreon. Make sure to subscribe, to like, to share. And remember, whatever you do for this land, you do for everybody. Godspeed.